The member for Riverina is going oh, to. I move the motion or second the motion. motion. You'd like to speak? But I'm going to speak to the motion. Okay. If it's okay to proceed. Yes. Move the motion. You, member for so Riverina, moved. please proceed. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. There were 2,000. 249,179 small businesses uh, across regional Australia uh, as at the 30th of June 2023. Now, that is a big number, a quarter of a million small businesses, and that's just in New South Wales. And of course, we know that right across the country, small business absolutely dominates the economic landscape because it is in small business where they employ most of the private sector, most of the people paying tax receipts are employed by small businesses. And small business owners and operators, uh, we have to applaud them. We have to thank them because they are the ones who pay their workers first, who often go without. They go without pay in many instances. They go without holidays. They make sure that the lifeblood of the Australian economy endures. And I have to say that across my Riverina electorate and all politics is local, uh, the Riverina small businesses absolutely dominate because uh, indeed uh, they contribute, and, and these, are just, these are just gross domestic product, uh, $739 million by Bland, Blanchire, uh, centred on West Wylong. Uh, take the figure for Coolum, it's a quarter of a billion dollars, quarter of a billion dollars. Uh, Cootamundra Gundagai Regional, it's 833 million. Junee, 464 million. Uh, 234 million contributed by Lockhart. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. Tamora, 549 million. And of course, then we come to Wagga Wagga, $6.8 <coughs> billion. Now, they are big figures. They are big figures. And indeed, what we should be doing is enhancing small business, not hampering. And I have to say, that the Labor government has constricted and constrained small business by its policies, by making sure that, for instance, the instant asset tax write-off was limited. Now, I know this was increased ever so slightly in the last budget, but it was far higher under a coalition government. And what small businesses were able to do, uh, if they were, say, a tradie or a farmer or indeed a uh, uh, small business operator who required a vehicle, uh, which required a vehicle, they'd go and they'd be able to write off the entire cost of that vehicle. But of course, when it came back to $20,000 under Labor, those provisions weren't possible because you can't buy too much of a car for $20,000, unless, of course, it's uh, one of those clapped out clunkers that uh, we all remember the, uh, the, uh, the, the clunker policy that Labor introduced in uh, 2010, but we won't go there. Now, we know that uh, small business uh, should be preserved and protected, but unfortunately Labor does not. And what they've done by their industrial relations policies, uh, what they've done with their uh, high taxing regime is to put every roadblock in the way of small business. And, uh, and no one feels this more than those in regional Australia. And no one feels it more in regional Australia than our farmers who grow the food and the fibre. And you only have to look at last year's budget where the largest amount of money uh, for agriculture, for that vital sector, uh, was for $107 million for shutting down the live sheep trade. So there's Labor. What they're doing is they're paying more than $100 million to shut down a sector of small business owners and operators who will be here out the front tomorrow. And I really welcome those Labor members if they're not prepared to address the rally, to go and at least listen to the rally, and particularly those West Australian Labor members, if they care about their constituents, if they care about small business, go and listen to what those small business owners and operators, particularly the Keep the Sheep farmers, have to say about Labor Party policies. Now, of the, uh, of the two and a half million small businesses in Australia, 69 per cent were in greater capital city area, 31 per cent in the regional area. And, uh, and I have to say, those, uh, that, that, that third of those or thereabouts in the regional areas, uh, I'm proud of what they do. I'm proud of all small businesses, the small business, former small business minister. I'm proud of what they do. And what I would say to those small business owners and operators is have a look at the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman's 
website as Bifio. Uh, it is a website well worth going to because no matter who's in government, there's something there for those small business owners and operators to help them uh, get through the myriad of uh, tax reform, to get through the myriad of legislation as far as IR is concerned. I thank the member.